Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're a fresh civil engineering graduate gearing up for job interviews, you're in the right place. Today we're going through the top 30 most asked civil engineering interview questions, focusing on basic concepts, on-site questions, and even software-related topics that interviewers love to ask. Let's jump right in. Tell me something about yourself. Interviewer expects. The interviewer wants to understand your background, interests, and how they relate to the position. Sample answer. I recently graduated with a degree in civil engineering from. During my studies, I developed a strong interest in structural engineering and sustainable design. I completed an internship at where I assisted in designing a small bridge, which solidified my passion for this field. In my free time, I enjoy reading about new construction technologies and participating in community service projects that focus on infrastructure improvement. Why did you choose civil engineering? Interviewer expects. The interviewer is looking for your motivation and passion for the field. Answer. I chose civil engineering because I've always been fascinated by how infrastructure shapes our daily lives. I want to be part of a profession that not only builds structures, but also contributes to the community and environment. The idea of designing safe and sustainable buildings and roads that people rely on inspires me. I believe civil engineering is a perfect blend of creativity and technical skills, which excites me. What are the main responsibilities of civil engineer on site? Interviewer expects basic understanding of site roles like supervision, quality control, safety, and coordination. Answer As a site civil engineer, the main responsibilities include supervising construction activities, ensuring that work is done as per the drawing and specifications, maintaining safety standards, checking material quality, coordinating with contractors and labor, and reporting daily progress. They also handle basic measurements and ensure that deadlines are met without compromising on quality. Example, in my internship, I observed how the site engineer checked the column alignment before pouring concrete and ensured proper shuttering. Have you visited any construction sites during your academics? Interviewer expects looking for practical exposure, and whether you could relate theory with site execution. Answer. Yes, I have visited several construction sites as part of my academic curriculum. These visits gave me practical insights into how construction is managed, the importance of safety protocols, and how theoretical concepts like surveying and material testing are applied on site. It was a valuable experience that helped bridge the gap between classroom learning and actual construction practices. Example. At one site, I saw how the engineer used a plumb bob to check column verticality and how curing was done by ponding method on slabs. What are the different methods of surveying? Interviewer expects. The interviewer wants to gauge your technical knowledge and understanding of surveying techniques. Sample answer. There are several methods of surveying, including 1. Chain surveying. This is a simple method using a chain or tape to measure distances. 2. Compass surveying. This method uses a compass to determine angles and directions. 3. Theodolite surveying a more advanced method that uses a theodolite for measuring horizontal and vertical angles. 4. GPS surveying utilizes global positioning system technology for high-accuracy measurements over large areas. 5. Total station surveying combines electronic distance measurement and angle measurement for precise surveying. Example. For example, chain surveying is used for small, relatively flat areas, while theodolite and total station surveying are used for larger, more complex sites requiring higher accuracy. What is the significance of water-cement ratio? Interviewer expects Understanding of how mixed design affects concrete strength and durability. Answer Water-cement ratio is the ratio of the amount of water to the amount of cement in a concrete mix. It plays a major role in determining the strength and durability of concrete. A lower water-cement ratio leads to higher strength but may affect workability, while a higher ratio improves workability but reduces strength. So, it's important to maintain the correct balance. Example 4M, 20 grade concrete. A typical water cement ratio might be around 0.5. If we add more water than required, the concrete might become weak and develop cracks. What is Young's modulus of elasticity? Interviewer expects. The interviewer wants to assess your understanding of material properties, particularly in relation to elasticity. Answer. Young's modulus of elasticity is a measure of the stiffness of a material. It is defined as the ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain in the linear elastic region of the material stress strain curve. Mathematically, is expressed as E strain stress epsilon sigma, where E is Young's modulus, sigma is the stress, and epsilon is the strain. Example, a higher Young's modulus indicates a stiffer material, which is crucial in structural engineering to ensure that materials can withstand applied loads without excessive deformation. What is the difference between concrete and cement? What is the difference between M15 and M25 concrete? Interviewer expects. The interviewer is looking for your understanding of construction materials and their classifications. Answer, cement is a binding material that, when mixed with water and aggregates, forms concrete. Concrete is a composite material made up of cement, water, fine aggregates, and coarse aggregates. 
Regarding the difference between M15 and M25 concrete, these designations refer to the compressive strength of concrete mixes. M15 has a characteristic compressive strength of 15 MPa at 28 days, while M25 has a strength of 25 MPa. The higher strength of M25 makes it suitable for more demanding structural applications, such as beams and columns, compared to M15, which is often used for non-structural elements like pavements. Example, M15 is typically used for less critical applications like plain cement concrete work, pathways, or flooring, while M25 is used for structural elements like beams, columns, and slabs where higher strength is required. What are the different types of cement? Interviewer expects. The interviewer wants to know if you are aware of the variety of cements available for different construction needs. Answer, there are many types of cement depending on the usage. The most commonly used is ordinary Portland cement. Other types include Portland Pozzolana cement for better durability and resistance to chemicals. Rapid hardening cement for quick setting and early strength. Sulfate resisting cement used where soil or water contains sulfates. White cement mainly used for decorative or architectural work. Example, for constructing a dam, low heat cement might be preferred to minimize thermal cracking. Whereas for fast-paced repair work, rapid hardening cement would be a better choice. What are the common causes of cracks in buildings? Interviewer expects awareness of basic site issues or design mistakes. Answer, cracks can be caused due to several reasons like poor construction practices, inadequate curing, settlement of soil, thermal expansion or contraction, use of low-quality materials, overloading or structural design flaws. These cracks may be superficial or structural depending on their size and cause. Example, I saw a case where due to lack of curing, shrinkage cracks developed on the slab. What are the different types of steel used in construction? Interviewer expects. They expect you to know the main types and their typical uses. Answer. The most common types of steel used are. Mild steel, used where bending strength is required. High yield strength deformed bars, like Fe 415, Fe 500, used in RCC. TMT bars, preferred now because of strength and ductility. Structural steel, used for industrial buildings, beams, and columns. Example. In most residential buildings, we use TMT Fe 500 bars for slabs and beams. Or it mixtures in concrete. Give some examples. Interviewer expects. This assesses your knowledge of how concrete properties can be modified. Answer. Admixtures are chemical or mineral substances added to concrete before or during mixing to modify its properties in the fresh or hardened state. They are used to achieve specific characteristics like. Examples. Plasticizers and superplasticizers. Accelerators. Retarders. Air and training agents. Waterproofing admixtures. Example. Adding a plasticizer makes concrete easier to pour in place, especially in complex formwork. How do you calculate the quantity of cement, sand, and aggregate for concrete? Interviewer expects. Basic understanding of concrete mix ratios and quantity estimation. Sample answer. To calculate the quantities of cement, sand, and aggregate for concrete, we typically use the nominal mix design method or the design mix method. For a nominal mix, such as 1 colon 2 colon 4, we can follow these steps. 1. Determine the volume of concrete required. For example, if we need 1 cubic meter of concrete. 2. Calculate the total parts. In a 1 colon 2 colon 4 mix, the total parts equals 1 plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 7. 3. Calculate the volume of each material. 4. Convert volume to weight, using the density of materials. Thus, for 1 cubic meter of concrete, we would need approximately 205 kilograms of cement, 458 kilograms of sand, and 857 kilograms of aggregate. Example, check below. Which software tools are you familiar with? Interviewer expects. They want to see if you have practical knowledge of industry standard software. Sample answer. I am familiar with several civil engineering software tools, including AutoCAD for 2D and 3D drafting and design, Revit for building information modeling and 3D modeling, SDAD.pro in a tabs for structural analysis and design. Civil 3D for infrastructure design and land development. Primavera P6 for project management and scheduling. SketchUp for conceptual 3D modeling and visualization. What is soil compaction and why is it important? Interviewer expects. They want to hear the definition and its significance in construction. Answer. Soil compaction is the process of increasing soil density by reducing air gaps through mechanical means. It is important because compacted soil provides greater strength and stability for foundations, reduces settlement increases load-bearing capacity, and minimizes water seepage and erosion. Proper soil compaction ensures the long-term durability and safety of structures built on the soil. Example, before casting a footing, we usually do compaction with a rammer or roller and check density using field tests like the Proctor test or Sanco method. What is the importance of curing concrete? Interviewer expects.
Understanding of concrete hardening and strength gain process. Answer. Curing is very important because it helps concrete retain moisture for proper hydration. Without curing, the concrete may dry out too early, leading to low strength, surface cracks, or dusting. Proper curing increases durability and compressive strength. Example. We usually cure concrete for at least 7 to 14 days using methods like water ponding, wet coverings, or curing compounds. What's the difference between AutoCAD and Revit? Interviewer expects understanding of traditional versus BM software. Answer. AutoCAD is mainly used for 2D drafting like floor plans and sections. It's very precise and useful for technical drawings. Revit, on the other hand, is a BIM tool. It creates intelligent 3D models with all the building components like walls, doors, and beams, and automatically generates plans, elevations, and sections from that model. If I change the wall thickness in Revit, the entire model updates. In AutoCAD, I'd have to manually update every drawing. What are the common causes of building collapse? Interviewer expects awareness of safety, poor practices, and failure reasons. Answer. Common causes include poor design or structural flaws, use of low-quality materials, inadequate foundation or soil issues, overloading beyond design capacity, lack of proper maintenance, natural disasters like earthquakes or floods. Sometimes, even poor workmanship or skipping curing can cause long-term issues. Example. There is a recent collapse case in due to unauthorized modifications and weak foundation. The repeated collapses of the under-construction Sultung Gun Jaguani got bridge in. Bihar highlight potential issues like substandard materials, poor construction, and design flaws leading to structural failure. What is the purpose of a retaining wall? Interviewer expects to assess your understanding of basic geotechnical structures. Answer. The primary purpose of a retaining wall is to hold back soil or other loose material at different elevations, preventing it from sliding or collapsing especially in situations with sloping terrain or excavations. Example, I saw one during a site visit where the wall supported a basement excavation to avoid soil collapse. What are the different methods of water treatment? Interviewer expects. They expect you to know the key processes used to make water safe for use. Answer, common methods of water treatment include sedimentation, allowing suspended solids to settle, filtration, removing particles using sand, gravel, or membranes, chlorination, Adding chlorine to disinfect and kill pathogens. Coagulation and flocculation. Adding chemicals to clump particles for easier removal. Aeration. Mixing air with water to remove gases and oxidize dissolved metals. Reverse osmosis. Using membranes to remove dissolved salts and impurities. UV treatment. Using ultraviolet light to disinfect water. Bonus. Water treatment plants also use reverse osmosis for desalination in coastal areas. What are the advantages and disadvantages of reinforced concrete? Interviewer expects to evaluate your understanding of a fundamental construction material. Answer. Advantages. Reinforced concrete offers high compressive strength, good tensile strength when combined with steel, excellent fire resistance, durability, versatility in shape, and relatively low maintenance costs. Disadvantages. It has a low strength-to-weight ratio, can be bulky, requires formwork for casting, is susceptible to cracking if not properly designed and constructed, and has a relatively slow construction time compared to some other methods. Example. It's commonly used in slabs, beams, columns, and bridges for its durability and strength. What do you see yourself in five years? Interviewer expects career clarity, motivation, and alignment with company goals. Answer. In five years, I see myself becoming a skilled civil engineer with hands-on project experience and possibly handling site coordination or project management roles. I also aim to enhance my knowledge in software tools and sustainable construction methods. Tip. Tip. Mention certification or learning goals like PMP, Lead or Revit if you're interested. What are your long-term career goals in civil engineering? Interviewer expects to understand your vision for your career path and your commitment to the field. Answer. My long-term goals involve becoming a recognized and respected civil engineering professional, contributing to significant infrastructure projects that have a positive impact on communities. I aspire to specialize in and potentially take on leadership roles, mentoring junior engineers, and contributing to innovation within the field. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Interviewer expects self-awareness, honesty, and improvement. Sample answer, strength. My strength is attention to detail and learning quickly. I'm good at documenting work, coordinating with peers, and using software to improve clarity in designs. Sample answer, weakness. My weakness was overthinking small things or spending extra time perfecting drawings. I'm working on prioritizing tasks better by focusing on deadlines and asking for peer feedback. Do you have any questions for us? Interviewer expects. They want to see your interest in the company and role. Sample answer. Yes, 
I'd like to know more about the types of projects I would be involved in as a fresher. What kind of training and growth opportunities does your company offer to new engineers? Here is a complete set of building or house-related interview questions with smart answers and the interviewer's expected takeaway for each question. Here is the first topic, pre-construction and planning. Five important questions along with answers. Pre-construction and planning. What are the first steps you take before starting building construction? How do you select a site for a residential building? What type of soil is best suited for building construction? What is soil testing and why is it important before construction? What are the necessary approvals and documents required before starting construction? Next topic is design phase. What is the role of an architect and structural engineer in building construction? What are floor plans, elevation drawings, and section drawings? What is FSI and how does it affect building design? What is a structural drawing and how is it different from an architectural drawing? How do you estimate the quantity of materials required for a two-floor house? Next topic is foundation work. What type of foundation would you suggest for a two- or three-story building? What is the typical depth of foundation for residential buildings? What precautions are taken during the excavation process? How is anti-termite treatment done before laying the foundation? What are the different types of footing used in house construction? Next topic is superstructure. What is the difference between load-bearing and frame structure? How do you ensure the correct mix ratio of concrete during column casting? What are the types of bricks or blocks used in wall construction? What is the difference between lintel and beam? What checks are done before and after slab casting? Next topic is roofing, finishing, and utilities. What types of roofing are commonly used for residential buildings? How is waterproofing done on the roof slab? What is plastering and when is it done? How do you plan for plumbing and electrical layout in a house? What is the role of curing and how long should it be done? Final touches and handover. What materials are commonly used for flooring in residential houses? How do you estimate the cost of construction per square foot? What safety measures must be followed during construction? What are common defects found after completion and how to prevent them? How do you ensure quality control and site supervision throughout the construction? Thanks for watching. We hope these civil engineering job interview questions and smart answers help you feel more confident in your preparation. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more valuable content.